Hey, what's up guys? Mike at Red Fox here. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to power your GPU and more importantly, your riser and not burn your house down. All right, so let's take a look at all the different possible connections and we're gonna go over some electrical standards to understand what the best way to do this is, and by best I mean safest. So here's my example GPU, it's an RX 5700. And here's my example riser that I have here that has every possible connection you could have on a riser. And then I have a EVGA 1000 watt G plus power supply for us today too. And an assortment of cables that we're gonna talk about. And by the time we get to the end of this video, what I want you to walk away with is making the best decision for you and the best decision should be the safest decision. That's the goal, right? Okay, so GPU you're probably familiar with. If you've built PCs in the past or switched out graphics cards in the past, you know, you slot this into your motherboard, PCIe slot, and then you provide the power to whatever um, mix of eight pin or six pin that you have on your GPU. And that's all you've ever had to th uh, really think about and that's totally fine, and, and this is gonna work essentially the same. But what's new is, instead of slotting it into the motherboard, we now have to slot it into this PCIe riser. And let's talk about this connector here. The spec for this connector, the standard, is that this will pull a maximum of 75 watts. And with the ATX standards, your motherboard would supply up to that to this connector through the motherboard uh, power connector that comes from the power supply. But we've taken a motherboard out of the equation, so that's not supplying the power. So instead, we need to give power to this PCIe riser via either our ATX power supply or our server power supply. And there, when you look at the riser, there's quite a few different ways to do that. And if you're not really paying attention you may select a connector that's not the safest one. And we're gonna talk about each one and land on what the safest way is to connect this riser back to your power supply. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get this one out of the way. So this connector may look familiar to you. That's called SATA. It's typically used for hard drives. And a lot of the newer risers don't have it, but the ones that I buy still do, not, not that I use it, and we'll go over why in a second, but um, depending on what version riser you have, you may very well have SATA on it. And this is what your SATA cable looks like, right? So you may wanna plug that right in there because you got the cable, and then plug this in into your power supply and start mining. But let's talk about why that's not a a good thing to do. In fact, you should avoid using this to power your riser for your GPU at all costs. Let's talk about the spec of SATA and we'll land on why that's a really bad idea. So in there, you can see all those different pins. And three of those pins will connect over this cable back to the 12 volt rail of a power supply. And that's how it's gonna get its power from here to here. What's important to know is the rating of each of those pins. The standard for SATA says that each of those three pins is rated to carry a maximum amperage of 1.5 amps each. So now we gotta do some math here. And to figure out watts, because that's what we're dealing in, we gotta do amps times volts. So, three pins at 1.5 amps each. So that gives us 4.5 amps times that by the 12 volts provided by the power supply, and that's gonna equal 54 watts that this cable can do. But we just talked about how this PCIe slot can pull up to 75 watts. And listen, I know we're miners and we are power limiting our cards and all that. But if you wanna be safe, 
plan for the worst, plan that this is gonna call for 75 watts at some point potentially. And if we do the math here, 54 is just not enough. Now I'm not making this up. These are standards that exist for SATA. So don't use this, do not use SATA. It's a bad idea. It cannot give enough wattage through the cable. So like, here's, here's what's gonna happen, right? If you use SATA. Your GPU is gonna call for 75 watts. Your power supply can do that on the 12 volt rail. And the thing that's stuck in the middle is a cable that can't handle that. And so what's gonna happen? The cable's gonna heat up, it's gonna melt, and potentially cause a fire and burn your mining rig and your whole house down. And you will be super sad and very far away from break even. So please don't use SATA. Um, and for the same reason, if you have some older risers that come with this horrible connector, right, that you can connect six pin to, same thing, it's a SATA connector. And these are probably even worse because I don't know what gauge these cables are. I don't know the quality of these connectors. Uh, absolutely throw this in the garbage right away. All right, let's talk about the best way to power your riser. And that's by using a very familiar cable. And that is your six pin cable, right? That's the same thing that's gonna go on the top of your GPU and supply that. Now the six pin will call for 75 watts. That's the standard, that's what it's spec'd for. And so knowing this is 75 watts, then we're safe to use a six pin cable and plug it right in to the six pin slot on our riser. And we're gonna be in really good shape and we're gonna be really safe. We're gonna come back to this in a second. Uh, before we do, so you also may have a six pin that looks like this, maybe from your server power supply, also good. You know, when you have like an EVGA branded cable or Corsair or whatever, they're using 18 gauge uh, wires in here, which are not the uh, weak point in the cable. And we'll talk about that more when we go through the pins that are inside. But if you're getting some cheap third party cables, just take a look at the cable and it will say it's gauge. 18 is where you wanna be. This is 16, which is actually even better. Um, but just be really careful about the quality of the cables that you might be buying. Okay, let's talk about the one I haven't yet, and that's a uh, Molex, right? That looks like this. This is probably a cable you don't use much, right? It's old school cable, but your riser has a Molex connection on it. And so I'll be honest, I've done a ton of research. SATA, there's a really clear standard for. PCIe, there's a really clear standard for. Molex is a little difficult. And everything that I've found tells me that not only were these connectors made by the Molex company, they're also made by another company called Amp in the past. And there's been a few different pins that have been used that are rated for different amps. So let's talk about Molex. Molex has one pin in there that will communicate back to the 12 volt rail on the power supply and pull its power. The question becomes, what is that pin rated for? We know for SATA, it's rated for 1.5 amps, but what is it rated for in Molex? The old school, early Molex cables had really thin pins that were rated for probably only around five amps from everything I found. The newer ones are probably rated for eight amps or 11 or even 13 some of the manufacturers make. So I took one apart because I'm just insanely curious. And we know that the cable itself, the wire, excuse me, is an 18 gauge. So that, that can carry quite a high amount of amperage. But the question is the pin. The pin is always with these cables, the limiting factor. What can this pin do? And then it's and this information isn't available on EVGA's website, by the way, uh, or any of the major manufacturers that I found. So you gotta figure out what pin from what manufacturer and what family of pin 
is EVGA using in their Molex cables and then what is that pin rated for in amperage and I'm sad to say that I can't find any identifying markings on this pin for me to reverse look up the manufacturer and what it's rated for. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to share my experience and I'm going to share the information that we do have. If it's a five amp, which I really doubt it, I think that's the old school ones from the power supplies from years ago, right? That's only gonna give you five times 12 is 60 watts, which isn't safe for that, right? Cause that's 75. You know, if it's maybe an 11 amp connector, then we're good. If it's a 13 amp connector, then we're, then we're even better getting us into what the 130s or 150s respectively um, for what the amount of watts that it can it can power is now my experience I've used at one I've used Molex connectors to power GPUs uh, for three years um, I will use one connector if in a pinch the best is PCIe I'll use one connector in a pinch but again I'm playing a game of chance here because I don't know what pin this is and what amperage it's rated for like I do with the standard for SATA and the standard for PCIe. I can't find any information that gives me a clear current standard and I'll leave everything I found in the description below for Molex and what the manufacturers for these cables in this case EVGA are using. So I'm gonna play it safe, I'm gonna avoid this, and we'll talk about the best setup in a second. But in a pinch, I've used one to power a riser, not all on this strand. So Molex is the one I've been pretty stuck on. Listen, if you know more and you can cite some credible, validated resources, uh, I would love to hear from you. Leave it in the description, send me an email, DM me on Twitter. All right, just like we broke down Molex and SATA, let's break down PCIe. So I already told you that the spec for what this connector will, will ask for is uh, 75 watts for a six pin, which we're gonna talk about now, and 150 watts for an eight pin. That's, this GPU is built and it won't call for more than that. Uh, that's the standard over these connectors. Now there's also electrical standards, and we've been talking a lot about that for uh, the pin quality, the gauge of the cable, and we're gonna again do that for, uh, in this case, six pin PCIe, because that is what our riser is asking for. So in a six pin cable, the connectors, the standard minimum is rated for eight amps. The amount of connectors a six pin typically has is three. There are some that only have two. Probably the older ones, but I don't know what you have in your house. You're pulling out of boxes from your garage or your basement to power your mining rigs. So we're gonna play it safe and we're gonna say that just two of these connect back to the 12 volt rail on your power supply. And that's gonna be totally fine for how we're gonna use them anyway. So what does that mean? That means two pins at 18 amps each. So that's 16 amps times the 12 volt rail is gonna give us 192 watts. And I know this is under best conditions and short cable lengths and temperatures and all that. 192 watts, like that's electrical standards will tell us that this is what that cable can do. Even though the PCIe standard for the connector will only pull 75 watts. So what does that mean? That means it's kind of a waste to just power one riser with this. I agree. So I power two. And the way I do that is by using a high quality PCIe splitter. And this is one, and there's a link in the description below to the ones I use. And you can see I can plug my six pin from my power supply into there and it will give me, in fact, two eight pin connectors. And what you can do, and I absolutely do this, is plug one into one riser and one into the other 
And because we just decided that the limit for this cable is 192 watts, you're good because you're running the max you would ever hit is 150. And again, good quality splitters. This is an 18 gauge cable made with good quality pins in there. So I've been using these for about three years, never had a problem. Now there is another way you can use a splitter depending on what cards you're you're running and I you saw that in the intro. So let me show you that again. So you can see in this case, I'm powering my GPU, this is a 1660 Super, and I'm powering its riser over a single splitter that connects back to the PCIe six pin coming off the power supply. Why can I do that? And why is that safe? The 1660 Super's TDP, and if you're not familiar with that term, the TDP is the max amount of wattage that this card could pull if you ran it at full blast. The max amount of uh, wattage a 1660 Super can pull is 125 watts. And in fact, right now it's running at 75, so that's where it's most efficient. But even if my overclocks reset, something crashed, and this thing started just burning, running full throttle, it would only pull 125 watts max. And all the math we just did tells me that I am good by the electrical standards to run 192 watts through this. Again, at I'm not taking into account temperatures, I'm not taking into account voltage drops for cable lengths, but still, there's enough headroom there that I'm I'm safe. When I started mining, this was a pretty confusing thing for me because while I've had PCs in the past and I've certainly upgraded video cards, you know, you just plug it in the motherboard and you're good, and it's going to take care of everything that it needs to. But now you're responsible because you have this riser here. So, in the end. SATA, bad. PCIe, good. Molex, maybe. So, best case thing that you can do to protect yourself and your rigs and your investment, use PCIe, either multiple power supplies if you need it, splitters if you can get good uh, high quality ones, and just be safe guys, that's what it's all about. So listen, I'm gonna leave links to everything I researched, like days and days and days of research in the description below. If you are somebody that is an expert in this area and can cite credible, validated resources, even from manufacturers, I'm not talking about forum posts, Reddit posts, what somebody said in Discord, no armchair electricians or electrical engineers, something that I can read, that the community can read, that is high quality and has a lot of substance to it, please comment. Please send me a DM on Twitter. Send me an email, contact at redfoxcrypto.com. I would love to hear from you. But anyway, I hope this was helpful, no matter if you're a new miner, experienced miner, or somewhere in the middle. And please, guys, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next video.